<laughs> Boom. Hey, everybody. I'm Shane. Are you Shane? I'm Lex. Well, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about, if you were in the pre-show, um, a couple of different reasons why you might need to move your, your PDQ, whether it's inventory or deploy. They're fairly interchangeable yeah. uh, as far as the, the processes that we're going to cover. Um, when you need to move those to another machine. Absolutely. Okay? So there's a, a couple of different reasons why you might need to do that. Let's just jump into it. Okay. And before we jump into it, that means drink some scotch. Have a, have a scotch. Nice. So, uh, All right. So, uh, number one, if you if you are not backing up using a, another backup solution, even Robocopy on a, on a schedule, you know, um, make sure you go, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to start and run here. I'm going to go to program data. Well, he's firing that up. Guys, make sure when you back up your stuff, back it up on a different machine because yeah. if the machine blows up, the backup's no good yeah. at that point. So just let's start out by putting those backups somewhere else. We do have a backup under the program data mm -hmm. uh, variable, the program data directory under MN Arsenal, and then the, the product, deploy your inventory. There's a backups uh, directory. I'm calling in. We have a call-in showing up. We have a call-in? Sweet. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, these are these are the backups. You'll see some that are uh, DBs and some that are, are cabs. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's okay? difference between the cabs and the DBs are? Well, if you look, look at the, the long, the mm -hmm. long names there, those are ones that are actually part of the backup process that we have. Uh, you can have scheduled. It's, in, it's set up in preferences database. Mm -hmm. um, and then others are when you uh, upgrade. Okay. Whenever you upgrade, uh, a PDQ product, we do a backup of that database. So you'll see some dot DBs, some dot cabs, and then cabs are compressed. Yeah. Save some cabs space. are definitely compressed. Yeah. Anyway, I, we're going to cover. We're going to cover. Let's just say that you want to move. Uh, you, maybe you have a new uh, tech. Uh, you're having a tech refresh. Or some you new wanna, hardware. Yeah. Yeah. You want to take your uh, your PDQ deploy uh, an inventory and move it to an, an, a nice new workstation or a server. All right. And it's 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 a tech refresh, so you've got better time to get it on better equipment, faster, better, bigger, the whole thing. So we've got this guy right here. Now, best practice: go over to options, go to your preferences, go to database, and um, these are once again where you can schedule your backups. But just go ahead and do a backup now, and that's the path where it's going to be backed up. And in the bonus content, there should be some links out there. There's one that was just added. Uh, late in the game, and it was uh, something that, that Jason had written a while ago. Um, restore or move a database from a backup database. Mm -hmm. This is actually a really good method. Um, it's there's probably another, the easiest way. Another document, not the documented way of doing a lot of manual moves. Uh, and that one's great as well, but this one just kind of helps you out a little bit. Oh, yeah, we mentioned, uh, sorry, uh, somebody just said, why is Lex wearing sunglasses? Because the sun never sets on cool, okay. my friends. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, really. I, guys, I had LASIK done on Monday. It was amazing. I'm just really light sensitive in the lights in here. Honestly, if I stand behind Shane, I can see his ribs. I mean, they're really bright. So You can't see my ribs. <laughs> Way too much <laughs> fat. <laughs> if you had 24 so, vision. Yeah. So, so, so now x-ray vision is part of LASIK. I understand that now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, yeah, we mentioned that in the pre-show. in the pre -show. Sorry, I just wanted to let you guys know. That's uh, Next week, I'll be good to go. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so we, we've backed it up. Now you can see backup is successful. This is what you want. Now, we've, uh, for, for purposes here, we say our brand new computer is called Drunk Rick. So I've already gone out how to Drunk Rick. How appropriately named. Yeah, I've um, already gone out to Drunk Rick and installed the latest um, deploy. But yeah. it's not the database that we want. You'll notice there is nothing there. Mm -hmm. I did put the license key in there. Okay. I did this to save some time. But, okay, if you have this, this, this option, Build your new server, install your deploy in your inventory, add your license key, and it's kind of a, a, a blank slate. Bare bones right there. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do, I'm just going to uh, minimize this right now. So we've we've backed up the one on Guinness. Now I'm going to go, since we've got this installed on Drunk Rick already, I'm going to go out to uh, our backups. Remember, we, we went to program mm -hmm. data. And there's the one that we just grabbed from today. And I'm going to move out to Drunk Rick, to the C drive. And I'm just going to go to Program Data there, Admin Arsenal, PDQ Deploy, Backups. Just I'm literally just going right to place there. that there, yeah. Well, just that copy that one, over. That was easy. Mm -hmm. 
Now, it's uh, in the backup it's directory. And the reason why we're, we're going to actually just run a command line. So I'm going to go back over here. And the backup directory is where this command line is going to look for. But I'm going to go back over here to, to a drunk Rick. And uh, I'm going to actually, before I close this, I'm going to open, I'm going to go to help and open an elevated command prompt. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that will actually open this elevated so you can run administrative commands. But notice the path is actually the program files, the admin arsenal, deploy directory. Save yourself having to travel there. I'm going to close that. And then note all these, if you're following along, all of these steps are in this KB of backing up, copying over, etc. And then we're going to run this command right here, PDQ deploy restore database. Or if it's in inventory, PDQ inventory restore database. Yep. Okay. So we're there. We'll just do PDQ deploy restore database. And this is actually going to probably pop up to uh, the systems, the service is running. Yes. I'll just say yes. I want to stop that. The little bug here. If there's only one backup file, it'll show twice. Mm -hmm. But if there's multiple ones, it'll just show once or each one. Yep. In this case, you can see that the exact same. It doesn't matter. You just hit one and enter. This is the backup from Guinness. And it's just going to go ahead and restore that. Now we should be able to open up. This is the install. I'm going to delete that. Uh, delete that. Open this. And you should see the same database that we had on Guinness. And you'll notice in the background on the, on the side right over here, there's where we started. And that should show up on Trunk Rick. Mm -hmm. It should. We will so see. It, while that's coming up, the other reason you might do that, let's say uh, you want to do migrate to central server or uh, you inherit it. This is another thing that happens. Like uh, new, you, you know, old sysadmin leaves, you inherit his job, the, the uh, console's installed there. You may want to move it to your machine so that you can like mm -hmm. retire that machine, yeah. the old machine. So Now, you might notice this. Hey, I moved it over. What are these exclamation Ooh, points? Why is it not working there? Okay. Well, it's because uh, you're still going to need to move your install files, uh, if, especially if your repository is on the uh, old machine. In this case, maybe it's on Guinness. We can find out by going to Guinness here, going to Preferences. Oh, preferences is already hidden. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Go to repository. You can see that's the path for our repository. Guess what? When you, the database does not include the install files. Yeah, that's All the big right. thing, guys. Always remember, you're going to have to move those files, the actual installs, and the mm -hmm. everything that goes with those are going to be. You need, to, need to move them over. Um, there's probably quite a few there. Uh, we'll, we'll copy it over. So what that means, once again, let's go back out to uh, Drunk Rick. If you're going to have the install file, um, if it's not yeah. going to be on a file share and you're going to put it directly on Drunk Rick, just move it over. Should we move it over to a server? Yeah, let's okay, put, let's put it on. Uh, Katie was great. She built, set up a Council of Ricks, which is our server. <laughs> and there's a share on there called, and I love how creative she is, it's called Share. Council of Ricks. Yeah, so there it's it spelled C H E R I. No, sure. <laughs> Chris here. Yay. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, a little birdie in my ear talking about DFS for those with repositories. That's a good Please point. use DFS yeah, or some, yeah. something. It, it helps alleviate this. DFS, especially if you have a lot of remote sites Absolutely. and you have the, the Active Directory you know, set up. Uh, I'm just going to make a plug for some videos where, unfortunately, it's me doing it, but it'll 10 minutes I can help you get DFS set up. So that birdie is brig, just to call it out. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna copy these over here. Is uh, yeah. So I'm just moving it over to share, not neat stuff. No, I put neat stuff out there, so we had something to look at. <laughs> what I did, my case. You're like a three year old. Neat stuff. <sighs> All right. Hey. So this is copying over. But guess what? <laughs> now we're gonna go over here to council. I'm just gonna copy this UNC, and then we're gonna go over to our new computer. Where's uh? There it is. Drunk Rick. And I'm going to come over to Options, Preferences. We're going to point the repository. Now, there's a variable in Deploy that actually is right here that mm -hmm. basically is our repository. So now we're going to point the repository at that, and anywhere the dollar sign repository is, it's going to fill in that for you. Yep. If you do have your repository on another server, on another machine, mm -hmm. uh, at that point, we do recommend that uh, you come over to uh, your performance and change the default copy mode to pull. Um, it reduces network traffic 
yeah. by reducing the number of copies that happens across your network. Now remember, you can change the copy mode per per package. So if yeah. your if your uh, repository is local to your to your PDQ server, um, then then push is just fine. But if your repository is on a network share, set that to pull. And then if you ever do have a package where the files are local on that server, you can change that in the properties of that package to push or vice versa. But we'll save that. And now, close this. And it's still copying over. The, the, notice the, notice they've all been resolved yeah. now. Problem solved. So just remember, you're not going to move the, um, the those installs over. We have a question? Dear Shane and Lex, is there a benefit to using DFS instead of local repository? And thanks, Chris, for reading my mind. Sincerely, David Allen F. Hey, David Allen. I, it really depends on if you have, um, re, you know, a lot of remote, remote sites. Yeah. Remote sites, because DFS really helps with. You've got you've got three or four different branch offices or thirty branch offices or In, something. Yeah. Instead of installing, let's say you're going to do seven zip and launching seven zip a hundred times to site number one and a hundred times to site number two. Um, it tells everybody at site one to pull from the local repository. So all it ends up doing is DFS is going to just copy it once to the local. Yeah, you know? if you're using the DFS namespace, yeah, then that namespace will be the same name, but actually a different uh, source. Uh, Microsoft unbeknownst, resolves unbeknownst, it Yeah, locally. Microsoft handles that, uh, you know, behind the scenes, so that a branch office is pulling that source from a, a, a location closer to it, hopefully local, yeah. than it is from over your WAN. So if, if you're all centrally located, then DFS is probably not necessary. You actually, any, you're, just adding, real, you're just benefit, adding an, yeah. extra, an extra level of complexity. The you know, DFS does require uh, synchronization. Chris, you'd like to say something? Yes, uh, I was talking to Brig about this not too long ago. Uh, we actually in favor of using DFS, uh, just even when it's just one spot, even locally, just for the benefit of if you ever have to move even locally, rather than a file server, just having everything that one spot that you can centralize for a repository for everything for PowerShell in my case, just my are you, preference. Are you trying to think about the future and possible growth, Chris? Uh-huh. Great doing that. Um, <laughs> notice, <laughs> you're great. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to come over here to central server. So we're running this in local mode. Now, if you were running your cent if you were already running in central server on your old computer and you moved it over to the new one, you would still need to change that new one to central server. server. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, a, like I say, it doesn't copy those, those install files over. Um, if you want to change it, uh, if you want to, if you want to run central server, you'll still need to go out to, you know, your new server and and go to central server and then change that server mode. So, so okay, so we got a bunch of people who've got like multiple people using it and they decide they want to go to central server. Which is another reason why some people are saying, hey, we want to utilize central server. Absolutely. We've got six administrators. They all have their own consoles. Um, obviously, we're not going to go through all of those right now, but that is one of those reasons. There's five reasons generally that you might do it. Um, one of those is... Uh, deciding to move to central server. Deciding to move to central server, but you don't want to use... You don't want everyone Any using your machine. Consoles. Yeah, you want to put it on the server. But and, and, and while we're calling it a central server, it, the, the central server piece does technically it does not technically require that this be on a server, server. OS. It's a feature, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it can still be on a Windows 10. Well, uh, it just depends on how many connections you have out there. Uh, you might want to seriously consider throwing it on a server, yeah. but it's not a requirement. So so Shane, we migrated um, our Guinness to drunk Rick. Mm -hmm. And let's say I built a package that I want to migrate up there, or maybe a collection I want to get up there. So okay, so a, should we do this? So basically, Guinness got moved over, but now you're running from your console, mm -hmm. and you and and we're not gonna. I built some custom packages. I don't want to have to rebuild them. I just want to. You yeah, know, you want to drive? Yeah. Right, so you no, I don't want to drive. I will walk you through it. Right. Every time I drive, bad things happen. So <clears throat> I've been working on Pickle Rick, right? And if you fire up Pickle Rick, the remote there. Mm -hmm. You will notice I've got a collection called PDQ, and that's all the machines I've got a PDQ install. Install, and then in deploy, if you fire that up, uh, <coughs> I was channeling my inner Chris the other fancy. day, and I made a fancy package. Okay. So at this point, you would export this package, and then do an import. Now we're going to export it, and I'd probably put that out on uh, Drunk Rick, right? Council of Ricks. Or excuse me, yes, you're at Council of Ricks. I mean, why not? It's there. <clears throat> Let's put it there. Now, 
the nice thing is you're going to be able to import this. And again, like the database move, it's just going to move the instructions for it. I'm still going to need to move the install files mm -hmm. from the repository on Pickle Rec over to the Council of Ricks. Correct. So uh, let's minimize. I've got all these windows open. Lots here. of windows. So now uh, in Drunk Rick, I'm just going to go over here to Packages, hit Import, go to Council of Ricks. And I put that under uh, Lex. And there's that XML file. Import it. And there's there now there's your, your there's install the file, but the, inst the 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 source files still need to go. And again, so we'll just jump over to Pickle Rick and we'll just copy those up over to Council of Ricks. Okay. In the repository. So I'm just gonna see where the I wonder who is. named that. <clears throat> who named what? <laughs> that package. So fancy X64. That would it <laughs> Hey, I was channeling my inner Chris. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm surprised I didn't do some of the corgi while I was at it, but yeah, go ahead, give man. It, give it time. I am just so tickled pink about the fanciness the that you're. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna hit copy here. On everyone. Yeah, I'm gonna hit copy there, and then I'll go out to. Uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, just move that right there, right there yeah. in the repository. Fancy, and then moving back over here to Drunk Rick. Fancy should get resolved here pretty soon. So many windows. Yeah, I know. There's so many windows. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Okay. Uh, you can always uh, force it. Well, let's, let's go ahead and put. Put you on the spot and see if that uh see if i actually moved it to the right place mm -hmm. put everything where it belongs if it didn't work it's not fancy chris <laughs> yeah. it's fancy in heart and spirit hey, i was trying <laughs> Mis for spirits Mis Scotch. Mis misappropriation right there <laughs> uh-oh all right so this is uh <laughs> let's now let's check your path because your path may be not as fancy. Not mm -hmm. nearly as fancy, but we can actually repoint it. Which comes up again, guys, if you move oh, a in. lot of... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, repository fancy. Anyway, so this, this is going to happen when you guys move your stuff. I mean, Chris, uh, you ended up moving your stuff and... Go ahead, man. Just bring it on, dude. I just see you laughing over there at me. Uh, yeah, and for those who can't see, my face is red. So once upon a time, there was this boy named Chris who used to store all his things not in the same spot, nor did I use the repository. So when time came that all these spots, specifically different file shares, happened to be renamed, all my file paths became irrelevant and wrong. So I, we actually have a blog out there that I wrote a while ago, a year or two ago, to help with that so you can change the file paths like straight from SQLite, uh, mm -hmm. SQL itself and PowerShell. So give it a look if you have any problems, give us some questions. I, I'm happy to help. Did I even spell that right? I don't know. But yeah. Probably not. Anyway, so again, you guys are going to run into the same kind of issues here where you're going to need to, once you move that, probably re-go and uh, identify the path. Again, no, there it those. is. It just took it just took some time. Took it, a minute, it, but yeah. yeah. Sorry. Again, guys, it it's one of those things. You know, just check it, and like I say, this is live. So when we make a mistake, it just like, some time that ever happens. You know, sixty percent <laughs> of the make, time, it works every time. Someone for me. make some. Well done. Thank you. Someone make a note of that. I want to see if we can speed up that uh, that refresh. Anyway, Five. that's that, that that is another another best practice I want mm -hmm. really want to cover. If you are going to have your uh, if you are going to have your install files, um, let's like, let's say you've got your repository, mm -hmm. but then you have a lot of custom packages that you built, and those are those install files all go out to the a UNC path. You might want to change that to that UNC path just to a, a, variable. a variable. Yeah. Okay. So what we can do in this case, just to show you kind of a best practice, uh, we could go out to you now. I'm going to go ahead and close Pickle Rick now. I'm going to start. <laughs> There's you know, too many things open. Lose there. some of these windows. JJ is grateful. We can't focus. Grateful and tearing my hair. So out Chris, time. while he's pulling that up, you wrote a uh, a PowerShell, and it, it's available to actually go in and and make those changes to a variable, right? Absolutely. That is in the bonus content. It is in the bonus content. And right. if you have any questions, please comment or contact us, me, whatever. But yeah, it, it does just that. So you need where it was and where it's going kind of a thing? Exactly. So it's going to look and match. You have to match what the path is that you're looking for and what it needs to be replaced with. And so it should be pretty straightforward once you identify that path or okay. those paths, rather. So notice I just placed the custom PKG mm -hmm. folder out there. And this is where maybe your install files, they're not going to be in repository necessarily. They're going to be in on a UNC somewhere. And you might be tempted, um, let me just copy this over here. So 
So in custom pack, you might be tempted to say, I'm building a brand new package and a uh, new step. I'm going to do an install and I'm going to go out to the server because, hey, those servers are hardly ever, uh, they never hardly ever change, you know what I mean? And a uh, custom package and seven zip, yada, yada, yada. So let's click that, see if we can navigate, make this a little faster. So there's custom package seven zip and we'll go there. Guess what? You're still, you ever have to move, let's say that that server, Council of Ricks, gets replaced sometime. Mm -hmm. All these packages you've accumulated over the years uh, are now pointing to Council of Ricks. That's because they are not referencing the repository variable there, so. But uh, this is a case where you're, yeah. where you're moving, where you're not going to use the repository. Okay. This is yeah, for okay. custom packages maybe yeah. and you just don't want to use that. So but what we'd recommend doing is just taking I'm going to actually copy up to the hash. Uh, uh, no, we'll, we'll leave that. Copy that and create a variable. Go out here to um, variables, options, variables, and add a new variable. And we'll just call this custom install. And that path is this. So now you would do custom install here instead. You would just literally do, and remember, when you're doing a custom variable, it's an at custom install. There's your backslash. Save it. It'll take some time to find it. But by doing it, by doing it this way, uh, if you ever have to change your, your server, all you have to do is change that variable Once. value, and all those other packages are going to be taken care of. What was that, Johnny Dangerously? Once. That's right. Like the once. Was that? Wait, I, I think I got it right. Yeah. Yep. You so it resolved it fine. Anyway, uh, and that will take some time to clear up. Anyway, um, do we have a question or anything? Yeah. Do we have? We throw down some questions. Dear Shane and Lex, is there any specific order or additional steps needed to migrate both deploy and inventory at the same time? Thanks, Jeff R. Um, you still do them sequentially. <laughs> yeah, I do one then the other. <laughs> I mean, yeah. no, there's not a, there's not a command to to say do it do all. Yeah. Um, just you know, grab, go ahead and pick it. I would probably do inventory first, and the reason for that is if you're moving inventory over and you've got deploy schedules that are expecting certain collections to exist, et cetera, et cetera. You want those collections to exist when once deploy comes up. That's good. Um, so I. In, in the sequence, best practice, I'd probably do inventory first and then do deploy, but it's still up to you and you still have to do them sequentially. Yep. So let's keep throwing down some questions. Dear masters of the PDQ order, when transferring from a local install to central server, what is the best way to transfer custom field data out of a local install to be able to add it to central server? Sincerely, Chris G. So if you are, um, when transferring from a local install to central, so I, I'm assuming you're not um, taking an existing database no, and no, no. making that the central yeah. server, moving that data. If you do that, you don't have to worry about uh, the local or the custom field data because that's part of that Doesn't database. Move, yeah. If you're talking about you've already got your central server, but there's uh, custom field data in others that you need, do you, do you do you want to pipe into that? You could you Chris? could do a, a CSV export, right? You could just build a report. And yes, you can do this. The, we, we've made it. We made it. We made it possible there. You can also do an import of a collection that references that. Okay. But um, I gotta think about that because I want to make sure I'm answering this correctly. You got all. You've already got all the data rep, uh, mapped to all those other. Uh, computers. computers and you uh, and it's from a, a console that's not going to be upgraded to central server okay so in my mind CSV computer name yeah you're all the to data and then export the export 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 the yeah. export that custom data Chris, what do you got buddy <laughs> yeah sorry you, you started talking to me but then I was writing a note so I, I, I no, just no catch up here anyway yes uh, so you can get all that information from exporting and, and actually doing this we act, we have a couple blogs I think uh, both Colby and myself on custom fields Colby and I uh, yeah the science <laughs> grammar whatever uh, PowerShell's corgi yeah in any case all of these can be done via PowerShell fairly simply and fairly straightforward if you're not 
keen on that, you can at least take a look and see if it's not too difficult, because I don't think it is. But if you have any questions or problems, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly happy to help, but it uh, shouldn't be too difficult. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I got I to gotta double back to it. If you are talking about taking an existing database with that custom field data and making that your central server, moving that to a new computer, if you move that database over and that's what becomes your central server, then that custom field data, you don't need to the, do the, the, the exports and the imports yeah. stuff. It's, it's part of it. So, do we have any, any, any other questions, you guys? Give us a second. No so, Shane, is there a way that we can move this and not, I mean, so here's the thing. You, you build a new one, you've got to put in new uh, your license key. Is there a way to do that and move the registry information over? Because, you know, oh, I, the, see, I see what you're saying. You yeah, know what I mean? The credentials so and all that, yeah. In the extra, thank you, in the, in the bonus content, if you don't want to do the restore database um, portion that we showed in the first step, then you're, you're really limited to a bunch of manual steps, okay? Um, and thank you for calling that out, Lex. So you want to move Guinness over. You don't want to do the restore database. Um, yes, go grab that data. That if, if you're just going to do that, stop the background service. Um, I'm going to go to preferences so that I can just go straight to this directory. Go to database. That takes you to program data mm -hmm. and Arsenal PDQ deploy. You can grab this database.db and just c copy that to the new server and it will pop up with that. You do not need the SHM or wall. In fact, we recommend that you not use those. Those are temporary files. Um, so don't, bo don't bother about log DB or server summary, anything like that. Uh, just that database DB is really what's important. But if you want, here's the thing. If you just copy that over and start it up, your credentials are not going to work. You're going to, and the reason for that is the registry keys. Yep. Uh, those, basically you, you move that over you're going to need to go to the source computer, which in this case is, is um, Guinness. This place. Guinness. Yep. And uh, go down to H key, local machine, software, admin arsenal. Um, do you, you can do all of admin arsenal if you have both products or just obviously deploy or whatever. But if you export this, I'm just going to move it out to Council works. works share. Uh, create a new directory. Call it DB stuff, whatever. If you copy this out there, reg settings. The the important the important thing is this. Number one, this will help uh, retain your credentials. Mm -hmm. Credentials are encrypted. They are the and, and they're two parts. The, key, encrypted, the yeah. yeah, the keys are in the database, the program, as well as uh, the, this registry. That's why if we ever ask you, support ever ask you, please send in your database so that we can troubleshoot a problem. We won't be able to access those credentials because in order to do that, we need we need this key right here, the secure key. We'll never ever ask you for that secure key. But go out to your new server, in this case, like Drunk Rick. Um, Run the rich file. Yeah, uh, go to import. Mm -hmm go out to just run that reg file and it will import that and then your database will match that key and your credentials will work. Do you want if to you don't do, if you don't if you don't do that with a registry key it's fine you're just going to have to enter your license information as well as go back to your all your credentials your credentials are listed here. Basically you're going to have to go to anything that has a password. So credentials you'd have to, you know, uh, edit those and add the password. If you use Spiceworks, you have to go to the Spiceworks. Do they have to stop the service when they do that? Nope. So. No, you have to go to preferences, uh, Spiceworks, enter your password in there. If you d if you use your mail server, you'll have anything that has a password, a password yeah. is encrypted, and that's that's what you're going to need to do. So it's up to you if you if you've lost you backed up your database, you've lost that computer, you have only have a backup, and you don't have the registry. You're going to have to re-enter those credentials. Yep. But that's a, a secure fee. That's a security feature that we that we offer to you. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, slow down. Dear Shane and Lex, I have an older version of PDQ. I am planning to upgrade to a new version for a new server. Can I install the new server, enter the license key, and then use the migration method from the start to transfer the database from version 12 to the newest version of the software? Thanks, Mirko D. 
Hey, Mirko. Yes, you can. In fact, that first step we showed you where you do the restore database, so PDQ deploy and then restore database. Uh, let's say you've got version 12 on your mm -hmm. old computer, but you update to version 15.4 uh, you know, 15 on as of this recording. 15.4 on the new one. Yes, when you hit restore uh, and grab that version 12 database, all it's going to do is say, oh, this is a, an older one. Uh, we're going to upgrade it. So it'll upgrade that at that point and you'll be running it. That's the cool part about that restore database is you don't have to match version to version. The manual method where you're copying the, right, the, the dot DB in the registries, yeah, you, it, it's very important to go version to version, yeah. exact same version because <clears throat> otherwise you'll get an error. That restore database, once again, for those of you who may have come in a little late. Again, yeah, that's the best practice. Use that restore database to move that file. It really is. Yeah. Uh, you got the, you've got the backup, so you back it up, and then in the command line, it's restore database. Yep. All right. And you can always get that command line by going to help, open elevated command prompt that takes you right to the path you need. PDQ deploy, space, restore database. And then we'll look in that backups directory and program data. And our final question coming from our good friend Chris, uppercase G. Are there any gotchas the wise masters know of for us to watch out for when migrating to central server? I, I think we've, we've tried to cover, there are some gotchas, but we tried to cover them. The, uh, some things that generally surprise people are um, the fact that the, their install files didn't get moved over. Install files or, you know, we picked Shane's database, not mine, so my stuff, my custom packages need to be exported and imported and then the files moved again that's mm -hmm. i mean it's not a gotcha but it is something you need to know so that you can consolidate everything in one spot yeah if, if, if you're talking about consolidating five or six local consoles mm -hmm. that every all those admins had spent so much time building you still have to pick one yep to, to upgrade and then you're going to be left with exporting and importing and even doing uh the custom field data if you need to Absolutely. um through that through the wizard that we talked about earlier where you can uh you know import custom field data from a csv file yeah. so those are really the gotchas can you think of anything chris uh, basically just what you talked about five minutes or less ago with the if you are migrating migrating to a different machine with this database even going to central server be aware that your credentials and all the passwords are now invalid unless you copy that secure key with it so you need to just go update those that's very important. That's a gotcha that I've seen myself <laughs> make. So, and we do make it. We do make it simple. Um, remember, we we love doing these test deployments. Chris showed this one during a uh, pre-show. Pre-show, but you, the, one of the best things you can do really is just. I'm just going to do a quick command one here. It's just a test, easy, deploy. And uh, we'll create a new command step, and you just make it something inconsequential, like there, something that's not going to, you know, make changes on that target system. Nice thing is it's going to connect, it's going to verify, and then it's going to run. And if those things happen, at least your communications, your passwords that way, yep. they're all working. When you deploy, you choose your targets, and oh, we don't have inventory, so you choose your targets, uh, drunk Rick or whatever, and see if this works. I mean, you've got we've got our credentials there. If those credentials needed to be changed, you're going to fail, fail. and you'll see an access is denied. Go out and change those credentials. It's very, very simple. Notice we failed. So <laughs> come over here. I guess we don't we need to check our credentials. Credentials. I'm going to double click on Quintana. Password. It helps to type correctly. <laughs> Test credentials. Good. Good. It's, and uh, yeah, there we go. So let's try this now. And let's see. Watch it fail, and everyone goes, "What the hell?" <laughs> that is some good stuff. There you and go. it's running. So the fact that it's at running, this point you know, right now, we know before. we've connected and made. You didn't know, even so. do that before. We were just running through it and didn't even bother changing them. Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna have to change your credentials. Sorry. Moral of the story is uh, use home row for typing. Home row for typing. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, there are times you're going to have to do this. Uh, it's let's hope so, because that means you get new hardware. Precisely. Tech yeah. refreshes. Well, let's hope that, it, that, that it's not because of a catastrophic failure. Please uh, take your backups directory <laughs> and copy that, machine. whatever backup source you have, um, even if it's a manual process. 
uh, back that up to another location so that you can always retrieve that data. Don't worry about the passwords. Those are encrypted and um, can't easily be, be gotten unless somebody has access to the registry and all that. They have to be an administrator to do it. So Absolutely. Once they're an administrator, they can screw everything up anyway. <laughs> all right, I'm Shane. This I'm is, Lex. This is, uh, this is Blind Lex. We'll talk to you guys later. See you later. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Jeff R. and Chris G., winners of PDQ Swag. Also, Craig K., winner of one of our final three vintage floppy coasters. Send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. And please remember, we are hiring. Go to pdq.com forward slash jobs. We are looking for a PDQ product expert engineer, web front end engineer, and a scripting and automation professional. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.